in this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you want to learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. <laughs> This video, I'm going to show you how to decorate a cake that I'm making for a 40th birthday. It's for a guy. The girl who ordered it, she said that she wants a masculine feel to it. When I think of masculine um, influences, I just think of straight edges, like sharp edges, and she wants black and gold, so darker colors. And I really had no idea what I was gonna do with this. And I wasn't even going to film it because I'm kind of just figuring this out as I go along. So this is a three tiered cake. And I start off with all three tiers covered in black marshmallow fondant. And I do have a video showing you how I do that. And I will link that below. And I will break this up into chapters so you can easily bounce around and review anything that you want to see again. So that's enough. And let's get into the video. Okay, to start off, I always measure my cake, see how tall it is and how uh, the circumference of it to see how long I have to roll out the fondant. And I have some Wilton gum tacks, put it a little bit in my fondant, knead that together. Look how smooth it is. Uh, I love that stuff. <laughs> some cornstarch and roll it out into a log. And I am rolling it tall enough so it'll be as tall as the cake and make sure that it is and roll it out long enough. And I wanna cut a bunch of different uh, ribbons. So I have this ribbon cutter. You can make it however wide that you want. And I'm gonna <laughs> mess around with it, make it a little wider. I will link that below. And I'm just cutting a bunch of strips with a ribbon cutter. I'm gonna to have to wipe it off as the fondant starts to stick to it and just continue and smoothing my cuts as always. So I just run my fingers down the side. I have a cake box lid. I always cut lids off of cake boxes, so I keep them for stuff like this. I'm just gonna transfer them all onto the lid. I have a yardstick that I cut in half and I just like to rub it up and down just to make sure all of the ribbons are straight. Set that aside. Now, I measured the top of my cake. I'm gonna do the square. The 40 is gonna fit in the square. You know, measure the top of the cake, make sure I put it out the right size. Knead the fondant together. I want it to be smooth. So stretch it out, find a smooth side, press it together. Now you have a smooth top and bottom. And I wanna get some cornstarch down and roll this out so the square will fit on top of it. See how thick that is? So I'll be able to get a skewer in it. And then I'm rolling out some gold fondant, not super thin, but thinner than the black. I have a cutting board with a non-skid pad underneath, a wet paper towel that I can keep wiping my X-Acto knife, and a Dresden tool. And why do my nails match my Dresden tool? I swear I didn't go to the nail salon asking for that. <laughs> and a needle tool. So I want to trace and cut the square. I don't have a square cutter this big, so I have to use my method. So I'm pressing down with the Dresden tool to transfer the line onto the fondant. Make sure you don't press too hard. And I'm just deepening the line so I can see it. Now I'm doing a little line on the inside. You could see that this is going to be like a border. I'm using the curved part and then I'm trying to get into the corners with the point just so it has a little border, using my pizza cutter to cut it out. And I realized that it was rounding the edges. So I'm taking my X-Acto knife and making shallow cuts where the corners are. So when I use the pizza cutter, it doesn't round the corners. And like always, I'm going to smooth my cuts. I do that every time. You're gonna see I smooth my cuts all the time. You just don't want the ed edges to be jagged. And again, using my rulers to make it square. Set that aside. And now let's do the same thing for the 40. And I'm gonna trace the outside and make sure you get the inside. Peel it back, make sure it transferred. Don't just lift it off. And now I'm gonna do the same thing for the name. I measured the name. I made. I don't want the name to be really big on the cake, so it's. Um, I printed it out small. Trace cut and smooth. So I am doing a shallow cut first. I'm not just dragging it all the way down to the board. I'm putting the tip in and making a line. That way I can follow the line and cut it out. If I make a shallow cut first, 
I won't mess up the fondant. And like always, you guys, I always say that, but I'm smoothing my cuts. Use my tools, press the fondant back down and make your cuts look pretty. Always cut the inner pieces first. It's so much easier to cut the inside pieces before you cut it all out of fondant. Realigning it on top to make sure that they stay in the right shape. Set that aside. Do the same thing for the name. Smooth the cuts, you know, set it aside. Now I want to paint it gold. I have this roll come super gold. I will link that below in a little dish. And some lemon extract. I like to use lemon extract. It evaporates super fast. Pour a little bit in there and mix it. And I like to tap. Can I stop saying the Happy Gilmore tap, tap, tap a -roo? That's the only... <laughs> I keep saying that, but I like to tap it on. That way I know I'm getting into all the little crevices. I like to turn it around, make sure I could see it from the top, from the sides. Do the same thing for the 40. Realigning it and set that aside. I have my middle tier here. I'm going to use the curved end of my Dresden tool and get a ruler. So I'm making straight lines and I'm just making an impression in here. So I am doing it little bits at a time. I should have done this before I cup or before I refrigerated the cake. The cake is cold, so it's a little difficult, but I'm just making random lines on here and then deepening the lines, keep going over them a few times with my Dresden tool. Once I have all the lines done, I'm just refining them. I'm using the uh, thicker end and just deepening that and sticking it back in the fridge. I need a little more gold mixed with a little more uh, lemon extract. And now I wanna paint this, holding my hand, supporting my hand with my other hand. I have a really thin paintbrush. Why couldn't I think of that word? And I am just painting all these impression lines. Why did I say it like that? <laughs> Gold. So it takes a couple coats and a steady hand. Don't drink any coffee before you do this. And I'm just trying to paint this. It is a little bit of a lengthy process, but once they are all painted, then go back over. When you do the second coat, it's really going to make the gold pop. All right, now I want to get rid of some gold. I have some vodka on a paper towel. Get the paper towel to a point and just rub it away. The vodka will evaporate and you will have no more gold mess on your cake, putting that back in the fridge. Now I want to do the same thing to the border on the square. It's easier to start in the corners and then go down. Sorry, I'm a little out of frame here. Now I have some piping gel. I want to put the 40 on. Get a little bit on the back, not too much, so you don't want it to seep out. And I'm aligning this down and to the right. I don't want it in the center. So start with a zero and then do the same thing for the fourth. And now I have a skewer. Like I always say, I'm twisting it in there. I'm screwing it in. I'm not jabbing it in. <laughs> Don't jab it because you're gonna distort it. So start in the very center and I'm twist and push, twist and push. I need to stop saying that. Lift it up, make sure it's not showing through the top or the bottom and make sure you can get it in as far as you want and or as far as it can go. Then I have toothpicks on either side. That's gonna prevent it from twisting when you put it in the top and set that aside. Now I'm rolling out some black fondant, a little thicker. I'm making the squares, some gold fondant. I'm doing the same thing, making it smooth front and back. Roll that a little thicker. So I'm rolling black and gold fondant out at different thicknesses. Is that the right word, thicknesses? <laughs> but, and then I'm grabbing some square cutters. I will link that set below and just cutting out a bunch of squares and smoothing my cuts. Right now for the thicker gold one, I'm cutting a center square out first, 
smooth my cuts and I don't have a square cutter that's big enough so I need to cut it like I did that other square so starting with my pizza cutter getting the edge and then I'm going to cut the corners and that way I don't round the corners so cut them first with an exacto knife and then put your pizza cutter through flip it over and now I want to paint all of these gold so I put a glove on because it can get a little messy make sure you get the edges and the tops and the back I'm, I'm doing the front and the back and the inside of this one because that's going to be standing straight up on top of the cake and it needs to be gold all over and make sure you do two coats it'll bring out the gold like it did on the cake and stacking the cake real quick. So I will link my full stacking tutorial that I'm measuring how tall the cake is and then cutting my straws to size, putting all the straws in, making sure it's level, adding some buttercream and stacking the cake. Make sure that's level. You see the process. Dowel the cake and cover the top. And now I'm making the border, so rolling this out in a log and then rolling it out really long. Cut it with my ribbon cutter, smooth my cuts, and get a little piping gel in the back. And then I like to do Crisco around the rest. So the piping gel is really going to hold it in place where, where the seam is. And the Crisco will help you um, maneuver the fondant to where you want it to be. So cut it where it meets. And then I take a little palette knife that looks ridiculous. Let me slow it down. <laughs> and I'm just pressing it down, making sure that it's even. And this looks a little gray. So I'm taking some Crisco, some shortening on a paintbrush and wiping it on there. And when you do that, it makes the black the same color. And take a paper towel and wipe the Crisco away. It's gonna be a little shiny, but the Crisco will set into the fondant. Now I'm trimming the bottom, get rid of the cornstarch on the back, and that's too tall, so I wanna trim these. I want them to stick out a little bit over the top of the cake, but doing the same thing. So I'm getting rid of the cornstarch with a dry brush. I'm gonna do that over the sink, and then cut these all to the same size. Got a little bit of piping gel, and I just wanna put it on one side, not all the way up to the top because it's gonna be sticking out over the cake, and then press the side with the piping gel onto the cake. See how it's sticking out a little bit on that right side? Because we're gonna slide that one in, so they're gonna overlap a little bit. And I'm just gonna do the same thing the whole way around the cake with all the pieces. And then taking a fondant smoother and just pressing them all onto the cake, making sure that they are all straight. Now I have some black buttercream here and a dry paintbrush. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm doing a little tester. Like, I think I like that. That looks good. So let me try it on here. So I'm just doing like a crisscross pattern, dipping my paintbrush into the buttercream icing and just making little X's. Now I want to make sure it goes all the way down to the bottom. So I'm pressing it down to where it meets the other cake and then uh, covering the rest of the cake with the fondant. And I will clean that up a little later. So you can see that I'm starting from the bottom and pulling it up. And that looks kind of cool, right? And do the same thing for the top. And now I'm cleaning up. This is the end of my paintbrush <laughs> and I'm just cleaning up the excess icing here and then using a dry paintbrush to wipe the rest of it away and refining it all right turning out the light makes it look a lot better I don't know why I put that in there I want to put some piping gel underneath and set this on top of the cake so I want to put it a little bit off to the right and then getting some piping gel or actually that's black icing. So getting some black icing behind the lettering and sticking that onto the cake. And the name is a little offset to the left and the topper's off to the right, getting a little toothpick and twisting it in like I did for the topper. And this way it'll stand up straight, get some piping gel underneath and put it down. 
and I just hold the squares up, see where it's going to look good and be like, eh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll put one here. I'll put one here. So I like, oh, look, I, I cut out a little square in the circle of that one, in this uh, circle, in the center of that one, getting a little piping gel on the back and stick that against the cake, you know? So I'm just trying to make it look a little, I don't know, like not haphazard, but I'm just trying to figure out where the squares look the best. And now I have some Crisco and I just want to get rid of like these panels. They look a little too gray. <laughs> so again, I'm adding some Crisco and then I take my paintbrush that had the Crisco on it to wipe it off. Now I have a paper towel. I'm wiping it off, cleaning the board like always, and then take a dry paintbrush and run it over all of them again. So this way it, it just deepens the black, makes it look better. And there's the cake. Okay, for not knowing what I was gonna do with this design, I like how it turned out. I'll put this, the picture over here so you can see. I like the little texture on the top tier. And with the lines, I was actually, I was thinking about, well, first she asked me to do a gold stencil and I was a little scared <laughs> because I've never done gold stencil before. And I was worried to even try because if I tried to put some stenciling on there and then some gold and it didn't work out, I have to scrape it off. I'd ruin the, the fondant and I just didn't want to take that chance as my boyfriend would say with his British accent. <laughs> I might've said it in the video. I didn't do the voiceover yet. <laughs> so I'm not sure what I said in there, but I did the lines as the cake was cold, the line impressions. And if I knew that I was gonna do that after I covered the cake in fondant, I would have done it then. So if you are going to try this design, I would say to cover your cake in fondant and then do all the line impressions and then put it in the refrigerator. It's gonna be so much easier to get the lines in there. And just for reference, the size of these tiers is four inches on top, the middle tier is a uh, double barrel six inch and the bottom tier is eight inch feeds about 50 people so i think that's it if you have any questions or comments leave them below and you can follow me on socials and i got my website and it's listed in the description below as well and if you want to stick around you can watch these two videos next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already please like this video if you liked it thank you so much for watching and remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.